Hey everyone, so my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass is finally live. Follow the link in the video description to check it out. I'm still in the process of adding the final touches and a few remaining tutorials. So over the next month, it's gonna be running at an early bird price, which is gonna be $100 off. So if you wanna go check it out, check it out soon. So I've been looking through these old CIA maps and I found this border style that I really, really like. If you zoom in on this one, you can see these repeating lines that go around the outer edge of the area. You can see it on a few different maps here. This one has it too. You zoom in on this map. It's really, really cool. So I'm gonna show you how you can recreate this look inside of Adobe After Effects. Now to create the maps, I'm actually gonna be using a premium extension called GeoLayers 3. If you wanna check it out, there'll be an affiliate link down in the video description. However, this particular technique of creating this border style, you can actually accomplish this using basic shape layers and native effects found inside of After Effects. All right, so I'm gonna create a new map comp here. Click next, and I'll go with the standard Bing aerial imagery. Click create, that's gonna get my project all set up. All right, for the first step, I wanna create a nice desaturated base map. So I'm gonna to go to the window menu and open up the effects and presets panel, and I'm gonna search my favorite effect, which is hue saturation, and I'm gonna bring this and drop it over my world map comp here, and then turn the master saturation all the way down, and I'll bring the lightness to 70. That's gonna give us this look here. For this map, we're gonna be focusing on the country of Belgium because as the international community is well aware, Belgians should not be trusted. To zoom into Belgium here, I can kind of manually move the map comp around or I can just search Belgium right here and then grab this map feature of the country and add it to the feature browser. And now I can simply double click it and it's perfectly gonna frame it up, but I'll zoom out a little bit here. Let's zoom out by like one level. Now, I wanna have the country standing out against the background. So to do that, I'm gonna create another map comp. So go up to your map comps here, and you can simply duplicate this one via this duplicate button. Choose the second option here. You don't wanna duplicate the entire containing composition. You just wanna duplicate the map comp. And make sure link view is turned on. So if we move the map around, both of these comps are gonna follow each other. So we'll rename this one, click duplicate. That's gonna create a new composition down here. Now what we can do is I can take this Belgium map feature here and draw it out. So let's just draw this feature out. Before we do that, let's go look at the settings here. We just wanna make sure it's not inside of a map comp or anything weird. Okay, so now we can draw this out. It's gonna draw it out in our containing comp and I'm gonna use this as a mat. So we'll call it mat. And now we'll grab the Belgium map comp and grab the track map pick whip. If you can't see this, toggle this little button here and you'll be able to see it. If you still can't see it, toggle switches modes and grab the track mat and select map Belgium one. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna tell this map comp, hey, use the transparency information of this one. So now it's, if we solo this one, you can now see it's using that as a map. So now what is that gonna allow us to do? Well, now we can go down to the world map comp, which is now essentially our background, and I can start to bring the opacity down a little bit, and that's gonna make the country stand out. So let's bring this down to like 80 or something. And I'll rename this just to keep everything straight. I'll call it Matt Belgium for background. All right, let's go create some cool repeating lines that we can use for our border. Go to the effects and presets panel and then search for repeating lines. This is actually an animation preset that I created. I created 10 different presets here. If you wanna check out that video, I'll link it in the video description. I got a cool opportunity to create some animation presets for Adobe and they're all kind of map related, so go check them out. Now, make sure you don't have anything selected down here and simply double click this. It's gonna give you this repeating line set. So now I wanna format these so that they will be a good size for our border. So we're just gonna go through these parameters one at a time. Let's zoom in here so we can see it. For line width, we're gonna bring it way, way down to like two. For line length, we're gonna bring it way, way, way up so that it covers our entire screen. We wanna do something like 3000. We're gonna want a bunch of copies. We'll do 350. For line gap, we want the line gap to be not very big. We want these to be really tight together. So we'll do six or seven. That's gonna bunch them up real tight together. See, look at that. If I zoom in here, you can see these. And now for rotation, we'll do something like 45 or 90, whichever way you want it to be facing. And then for color, I'll go down and bring the brightness to nine to make them black. So now we have these lines, they're looking good, but how can we place them on the outer edge of our shape here? Well, we're gonna do that via a luma mat. Well, first I gotta rename this layer, we'll call it repeating lines. 
and I'm actually gonna turn it off and lock it. Now, if you remember before, we used an alpha map to isolate the Belgium country here against the background world map. If you go down and grab the Belgium map comp and hover your mouse over this icon, it says alpha mat selected. Click to switch to luma mat. So the difference between these two mat types is that alpha looks at simply the alpha information of the mat layer to apply that to the alpha of the source. Whereas a luma mat will look at both the alpha information as well as the luminance values. So luminance values are essentially brightness values. If you click on the color here, you can see the brightness levels down here. For HSB, you have hue, saturation, and brightness. So right now, this brightness is set to 29%, which essentially means if I use this as a luma mat, it's gonna make the opacity of my Belgium layer 29%. So I can use this to create more complex mats. So I'm gonna use it to isolate just the outer edge of this to apply those repeating lines to that specific area. So I'll go grab this original mat layer. I'm gonna duplicate it and we're gonna use this as our luma mat. So I'll call it luma mat Belgium border width. I'll turn on the visibility so we can see what we've got going on. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a border element and I'm gonna make sure the border has a brightness level of 100% and I want the fill to have a brightness level of 0%. That way, once it's applied as a luma mat, we'll only see the border. Now if you look up here, you don't have a stroke element. So open up the shape group here and then click on this add button and apply a stroke that way. And now you can see stroke is up here. You can control the stroke width here. So I'm gonna bump the stroke width way up. If you zoom in here, first of all, you notice that the stroke is super nasty looking. It's all jagged. So you can open up the stroke parameters and you can go to line join, set that to round. Now we also have another problem and that is that the stroke is on top of the fill. And you can see that because this is the border of our country, the edge. So the stroke is expanding from the center. That's the way these work. They expand from the center. So we only want it to expand on the outer edge. So I need to bring this stroke underneath the fill and simply do that right here. Just make sure your stroke is underneath the fill. Now, when we expand the width, it's only going to expand from the outside. There we go. Now it's just a matter of making sure that in the color picker areas here, the color selection, click on these, make sure that the brightness of your stroke is 100, indeed it is, and make sure that the brightness of your fill is zero. Now if you see, as you go down, the brightness goes down, as you go up, the brightness goes up. So make sure it's all the way bottomed out. Okay, so now we have a proper luma mat here. And to make sure it's a proper luma mat, let's turn on the visibility of our lines again, and moment of truth, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab repeating lines, and under the track mat column, we're gonna set it to luma mat, which automatically turns the visibility of that off, and right now, it defaults to alpha mat. Let me zoom in so we can see. So to change that, simply toggle it to luma mat, and then voila, there we go. We have a proper luma mat, and we have a proper CIA border style, and now, you can come down to your luma mat and just start to play with the stroke width and it's going to expand and you have some pretty tight control over it. Also, if we do any blend modes or anything with our main shape layer, it's not gonna show us any of those repeating lines underneath a nice, clean luma mat. Gotta love it. Now go grab the text tool and let's just add some sweet text here. And I'll go ahead and attach this to the map. I also forgot to attach the lines to the map. That's very important. Attach that here and make sure that these are set to 3D. And now if we zoom way in, very, very cool. If you wanna get the project files, be sure to head over to my Patreon page, link in the video description. And once again, if you have GeoLayers 3 and you're a hardcore map maker and you wanna go map maker beast mode, go check out my new GeoLayers 3 masterclass. It just came out. I've been working on this for months. Big shout out to my tier three patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flumi Plus One, Ryan, Josh, and Alex. Thank you all so much for making this video possible.